Hello everyone, my name is Sinead Jones and this is KNKY which stands for Know the New Kinky You. I'm your resident certified sex coach and today we're here to talk about sex. In fact, just the what is sex question. But before we jump into that, I just want to remind you to subscribe and to hit the notification bell so that you can know when these new videos drop. Uh, I want to thank you though for, for tuning in and watching with me. We are a community and your feedback and your comments are just as valuable to this conversation as mine and I appreciate those of you who take the opportunity to, to share. Uh, don't forget to follow me across all social media at D-O-Y-O-U-K-N-K-Y. -K so let's talk about sex and I, I have a, in my head I kind of want to say that. Uh, what, Let's talk about sex, baby, but I can't sing, so we're just going to skip that part. Um, so sex is, from a biological perspective, it's the thing that separates males from females. That's what sex is. Males from females. However, per Webster's Dictionary, it's the physical activity that is related to and often includes sexual intercourse. Now, when they're talking about sexual intercourse, they're really talking about cisgender heterosexual intercourse where a penis gets inserted into a vagina. But we all know that that is not a very comprehensive definition of sex. Uh, we've even evolved from the Bill Clinton uh, definition of sex. I did not have sex with that woman. Sex has evolved to the point where the leading organization, the World Health Organization, has a working definition of sex. It has a working definition of sex, sexual health, sexuality, and sexual rights. And this working definition is intended to be all-encompassing, uh, non-exclusive, and address the holistic approach to mental, physical, emotional, spiritual uh, health and wellness and working towards something that brings you pleasure and has been acted upon with consent. Full consent. I Meaning not like halfway out of it and I'm telling you, no. Consent. Full consent. So, what is sex intended to be? It is meant to be an experience, not just had. I'm sure that I'm not the only person that has gone through the motions of having sex just to say that, you know, it was either done or to do it just to satisfy some person versus actually being in the moment and enjoying it. So although the act of sex was had, the associated pleasure that is supposed to accompany sex doesn't always happen, which means that you have to go into it knowing that this is a situation that you want to be in and this is a situation that you're going with the intent to give and receive pleasure. Sex is emotion in motion. You are connecting with another person. Even if you're masturbating, you are connecting with yourself at a, a, a deeper level. But when you're connecting with another person, you're opening yourself up to, to be in a shared emotional state with that person. And whether we're talking about love or lust, it's that bond, it's that chemical bond in that moment that makes sex a, a pleasurable, can make sex a pleasurable connection when your mindset is right, when your intentions are good, and when you know that the focus is on satisfaction, gratification, and all things that make the world go round, as opposed to how well am I doing in performance-based stress. So all of the mental, all of the emotional, all of the spiritual, you know, all of these things work together. And I've talked before about how, you know, especially it's harder for women to put themselves in an emotional state or in a physical state where you are distracted by life and kids and bills and uh, you know just 
making your partner happy or you're, 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 you've taken yourself out of the picture and you're focused on everything else. So it's harder when all of the things are aligned. But as men and women, when we approach things differently, when sex is no longer about getting it over with or getting it done and it's about being in a moment with yourself or with a person or multiple parts, whatever that environment looks like, when you are in it and you're in it to be happy and to experience another person or experience yourself, that transition between sex as an act and sex as a dynamic, as sex as a, a purpose, it becomes very, very distinct things and you, you when you know the difference you no longer want to go back to sex as just an act but it also means understanding and knowing what your sexual response cycle is I've talked to you guys about this this is something that if you're not familiar with you need to become familiar with your sexual response cycle from the whole arousal desire uh, the the plateau the orgasm to the resolution and refractory periods i've done other videos on the details of what each of these phases does but when you know where you are in that cycle and you know how to maintain in a certain phase or bring yourself to the next phase then that self-awareness that self-acknowledgement is something that in your toolbox is something that is really going to help you when it comes to understanding and enjoying sexual activities but a lot of times you're even wondering like that that first phase of the sexual response cycle the SRC is desire and arousal mm -hmm. and I'm not it's not a man versus woman thing because that's definitely a, a good another stereotype if you missed our stereotype video that men always walk around uh, hard and wanting to fuck and women never want to fuck and you know no women want to have sex there are certain men that don't want to have sex if there is what you call a uh, imbalance in desire then you have to figure out how to stimulate that how to create that spark and so uh, there is the concept of a spontaneous desire or spontaneous arousal versus responsive desire responsive arousal so think of spontaneous as in all of a sudden out of the blue you're just horny oh my god I, mean, I want to have sex oh my god it could have been you really are feeling like where did this come from that's supposed to be the spontaneous desire versus the responsive desire meaning that I am responding to certain stimuli that is going to put me into the mood to have sex. So uh, think of it as you have to preheat the oven versus, you know, you if the, if the spontaneous is you put the lighter fluid on the grill and you throw in a match and boom, it's there, fire. Versus cooking in the home oven, you got to turn it on preheat and wait for it to warm up to 450. The thing to remember though is that in each of those instances there was still a trigger. So whether it is a thought of the person that you are wanting to be intimate with, whether it is uh, you happen to be watching porn or you saw an attractive person go past and it triggered uh, a sexual arousal in you. That's perfect. And hopefully you put in that work to make sure that your partner is up for it when you're up for it. But a lot of times that doesn't happen and you have to do things to kind of raise or even out the bar so that you guys are in the same place at the same time. So this is where one, understanding what triggers work for people. So if you have a partner and you know that oral sex, every time you perform oral sex, you're guaranteed to get some. Okay, what's the big deal? Perform oral sex if that's what gets you to where you want. If it's, uh, I don't know, 
watching uh, a, an erotic movie together like just planting that seed of a, of a love scene you know that's a possibility of how to get things done but again with most people you have to cross multiple phases so hit that mental you know start building that anticipation throughout the day you know flirt uh, verbalize what you actually want to happen you know a lot of times we just assume that you know that person will pick up on our cues and a lot of times it just doesn't happen that way you have to verbalize what it is that you're trying to accomplish and you know help to paint the mental picture you know work with your partner to get them into the headspace of why this is going to be so good for the both of you so it's not just a one-sided thing oh i have to have sex no i get to have sex i can't wait to have sex because nine times out of ten when sex is good even if you are not in the headspace in the very beginning once all of that stuff starts getting tossed around and and, and fondled your where you were is not where you are so just put the work in also have to touch that emotional part of yourself where it's you know letting them know how you feel about them that you care about them uh try words of affirmation you know when you know those love languages and can speak to that person you can navigate the waters and helping them to come to your side it might take a little influence but at the end of the day you want to spend that time with that person you want to connect with that person so do what it takes to connect especially if you're the one that wants to have sex and you feel like you're the initiator and that person perhaps is not the initiator own your role initiate own your role initiate and then perhaps your partner on their own will want to initiate but to try to place conditions on people and situations that aren't necessarily where they are to get you where or get them where you want them to be is counterintuitive and counterproductive to what you're trying to accomplish which is basically to share your time and your essence with another person and to feel good we've talked about the physical aspect to use massage you know kissing you know pecs you know do deep french kiss uh fondling even go old school dry humping you know build up that roar i can't wait to tear your clothes off type of situation you know that's that's what you did when you ain't know how to fuck you was just like you was playing around and getting hot and heavy and you was just like Okay, I gotta take a break, maybe. But those are things that you kind of have to work on. So foreplay, um, just understand that there is there's something we'll talk about a little bit more. Not right now. It's called other sex, and it's sex is not just the traditional penis, vagina, uh, oral sex. It's it's all of it's it can be so many other things and right now what you're trying to do is put yourself and your partner or yourself you know in a place where sex is enjoyable and it's something that you're looking forward to or even the fact that when you are with your partner it doesn't have to lead to sex it could just lead to spending some intimate time together that will spark another moment at another time it's like oh that felt really good I want to continue this along so sex is still just in general not it's not a mystery but it's it's a corridor with unending doors so you're walking down this hallway and you can open up a door on either side open up a door and you find something new you find something new you find something new especially when you're with you know a partner you find something new but the only way to do that is to open the door is to look inside is to ask the questions is to communicate and be honest so sex is what you make it it's either as good or as bad as you want it to be and if you want it good and if you want it better if you want it to be pleasurable you got to put it to work you have to put it to work it's in you you can do it I know you can do it I'm your champion I am your advocate sex is that thing that with all other bullshit in life is happening to you 
that sex should be the thing that you are within, that you are experiencing, you are in the moment, and all the other bullshit just kind of fades away. So, tell me what you think. What are your definitions of sex? Share them in the comments. I, again, appreciate you watching this video. Uh, I will see you on the next one, and I hope that you've learned a bit more about the new kinky year. I will talk to you soon.